Back on Inside Tennessee with former Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam, who has written a book, Faithful Presence, and it is available right now. And one point, uh, Governor, before I move to Don, because he had a follow-up on his question about the January 6 event, uh, and you mentioned this in an earlier interview with us, that you actually filed this book in November and asked the publisher, hey, wait a minute, what happened in January I need to write about? And that was the foreword of your book mentioned in that. Um, so just that point as we go to Don. Yeah, so, Governor, I, I know you struggled with the decision as to whether or not you would run uh, for Lamar Alexander's open Senate seat, uh, and the seat that ultimately was won by Bill Haggerty. And unfortunately, at least certainly for me and many of us, both Senator Haggerty and Senator Blackburn supported the efforts that clearly were not founded in, in our rules and constitution to overturn the election. But you chose not to say anything publicly at that time or reach out. And, and I know you uh, have said in other articles that you feel like it may not be your place, but you're one of three surviving gov ex-governors in Tennessee. If it's not your place, whose place is it to, to let our elected officials know, hey, this is wrong and you shouldn't do this? Yeah, well, there's actually four of us. Uh, you have uh, Governor Dunn, nah. Governor Santos, Governor Alexander, so I'm not sure which one uh, in me. So, uh, I, listen, I think, Don, Don, I think if you look at my career, you see very few times when I've taken public shot, whether it be legislators of the other party, uh, you know, just really anybody, because I'm just not convinced that one more person taking a public shot at someone is a good idea. Now, you say, well, why, why don't you, you know, you can reach out to them as well. Uh, you know, on occasion, I do on things, but I, you know, Lamar was always really strong to me, like, has one governor at a time, and I can give you an opinion, but to call you up and say, here's what you should do is not appropriate. And uh, I don't, I don't know in that situation, to be honest with you, that in the middle of that chaotic day of January 6, that one more call from someone like me was going to help, knowing all the phone calls that were going in there already. Governor, right. but, I, but at, even, uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Don. I would say even prior to January 6, Senators Hagerty and Blackburn had indicated that they were going to oppose a certification, and I, I think in hearing you earlier and in knowing you, you know that wasn't right. And, and I suppose it's all of our responsibilities to let our people know, but you hold a unique position. And I, I guess it's how serious does it have to become before you feel compelled to pick up the phone and call a, a counterpart or a colleague? Yeah, li listen, uh, I'm not, I, I can't, I'm not gonna make their arguments for them. My understanding was they had some questions about the press that again, I don't, I can't, I can't speak for them in that situation. I just don't, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I was confident that the right thing would happen, and the right thing did happen, d despite the Capitol being stormed. Um, despite that, at the end of the day, Vice President Pence did the right thing, and, and the votes happened uh, that day on the Senate floor. Governor, when you look currently at our political landscape and apply some lessons from your book to what's happening now and pick your to topic, be it uh, voting rights or what we're, the discussion we're having uh, about the border and what should happen there, is there some, are there some lessons from your book you, you think could help in people discussing what turn out to be very divisive issues? Well, I think you'd start with this. Is this stuff really matters, right? Back to the the example I gave with Israel, Israelites in Babylon, like we're supposed to care about the, the place we live. And, and this matters. And to get where we're always in, a, in, a, in a, uh, a, meth, a mode of operation that says, our job here is not to solve the problem. Our job here is to uh, be able to fire back at the other side. And so I think the, the first thing I would ask to, to or, or I'd ask folks to is, no matter where you're in elected office, or if you're just a supporter is, is what you're doing actually helping to solve a problem or not? Because we know that just yelling at the other side does not do that. And if you truly care uh, about the common good uh, of this community, this state, this country, then you should be about solving the problem and realizing uh, that this is a very divided country. I think one of the things that people on both sides miss is there's almost as, there's there's about as many people on the other side as there is on your side, whichever side you're on. And so this idea that if we just dig in and yell harder, we'll solve the problem that way is, is not true. Governor, I, one of the things you also mentioned in your book that, that governing 
is a lot more difficult and solving problems than what you had anticipated. Tell me what was the hardest, what was the most difficult problem that you faced as governor that you had to solve? You know, uh, I, in our early years, when the state was coming out of the you know the recession of 08, 09, remember we, we go in in November of 11, uh, there'd been all the federal money from the stimulus plan that was put in the state budget was coming out. So in those early years when you have to make decisions on budget issues about you know vital service areas and you realize we just can't do all this, we don't have the money to do it. Those are hard when you're realizing, okay, when you say, all right, are we gonna, are we gonna cut the budget to our, uh, to our folks that serve the intellectually, uh, uh, dis intellectually and physically disabled. Nobody wants to make that call. So early, it would have been some of the difficult budget calls. Late, um, we had to make decisions, capital punishment, and were we going to intervene in that process? And as much as you see it coming and know that you should be prepared for that, you're 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 not prepared till you know that I need to sit here by the phone and the warden of that penitentiary is going to call sometime in the next five minutes. Well, I know, speaking of one of those late in, uh, in your term uh, decisions you had to make was Centoria Brown. Mm -hmm. And I read, you had a couple of chapters in your book about mm -hmm. her and the decision whether to pardon her or not. And it became international story, not just something in Tennessee. Right. And you mentioned there was a struggle for you between mercy and justice. How did you make that decision? So those were all hard, and you know somebody like Don who deals with in defense work all the time. Uh, you know, you think you can do both of those in Centoya's case or anyone else. I can look at a case and I can figure out how to be just. You know, do the right thing considering the the victim's family and setting precedents, et cetera, and mercy, thinking this person, you know, deserves some mercy and grace in this. And I can look at those and balance them out. And it was just way harder than I thought it would be. In Centoya's case. I became convinced after a while looking at her case that we were better, society, society was better off the, uh, with her out of prison, that she truly was a great case of redemption, that the, the, the correction system in this case had worked. But I also became aware of like 80 something other people who had been sentenced to life as a juvenile. And their attentions had not, their cases had not gotten all the attention that Centoy's had, you know, Snoop Dogg and Kim Kardashian had not tweeted about them. So was it fair to pull her out because of all the attention she got? On the other hand, was it fair to say, we're not going to pull her out because she got all this attention? And th those are the things, like I said, you, you just, you think, I can figure out how to do this, but it's a lot harder and the cases are a lot more, cases. again, someone like Don does this for a living, there's, there's always a little bit more to the other side of the story than you think there is. We're going to take another quick break, Don. I'll let you in uh, right after this one. We're back on Inside Tennessee with former Governor Bill Haslam.